Hey, what's up guys? This is Michael and I want to show you guys how to create a drop down menu using cell references. So I've already created a video like this before on my old channel, but I wanted to kind of get more in depth to show you guys more options that you guys have. So this is the raw data set I'm using. Um, it's a list of games being played by the Lakers and the results of the games. And what I want to show you guys how to do is create filters like this based on that data. So you can select certain options and then the data will update. Or like in this case, you can select um, whether the game was at home, whether it was a win or a loss, whether the team scored, only show the games where the team scored greater than, 100, greater than 80 or 90 or 100. And then you can kind of sort it by descending and ascending. Okay, so um, this is the data set that we're using. Um, it has the game number, the date the game was played, whether the game was played home or away, the opponent name, whether it was a win or a loss, the team score, and the opponent score. So I want to show you guys how to create a filter showing um, with a drop-down menu um, by selecting the opponent, the opponent name and then just showing those games only. I want to show you guys how to select um, like you know multiple options so if you want to do the arena a win or a lost and so forth so the first thing i'm going to do is show you guys how to create a drop down menu with the opponent team right so i'm going to put in an option here that says select team and then i'll have the drop down menu here so i'm going to right click wherever i want the drop down menu and then i'm going to click on data validation list from a range and then I'm going to click here to say select data range. I'm going to go back to my data set. And then I'm going to highlight this list of opponent names. So what this is going to do is I'm going to click save. So what this is going to do, it's going to create a drop down option that shows all of the team names from that data set. But the thing about this is that it's not showing it in alphabetical order, which is kind of nicer for the user to have. So what I typically do with all my sheets is I create a separate tab called either data validation or I'll call it drop downs. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a column that's called, um, I'll say opponent team. And then I'm going to type in equals unique. I'm going to go to my data set and I'm going to select the list of opponents, right? So I'm going to highlight all of this down. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to create a unique list sorted in alphabetical order that I can have my drop down menu select from. So I'm going to select all the data. I'm going to press enter. So what this does is it creates a unique list of all of my opponent names, but it's still not in order, right? So I'm going to go back into the formula and then I'm going to type before unique, but after the equal sign, I'm going to type in sort S O R T open parentheses and then a close parentheses at the end and press enter. So now this is going to sort the list of opponent names by alphabetical order. And then I'm going to change the range for the drop down menu from the raw data set, which is in tab data D8, D89. I'm going to change that select data range. I'm going to click on drop down. I'm going to highlight my new list and press save. So now when I go back to my drop down list, it's going to have it all in alphabetical order, which is a bit nicer for the user to have. Okay, so I'm going to select, let's say, um, just the Boston Celtics, right? So now I'm going to write my query formula. So I'm going to put it here and put in equals query open parentheses. Now it says here I need to have the data set and then the formula, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is while this is still open, I'm going to click on the data tab and then I'm going to highlight all of the data that I have. So I'm going to highlight all this data. Typically, I like to just go all the way down. And so right now it says A7 to G104, which is what I have highlighted. I like to erase the final row number so that there's no limitations in case we add in more data. It's going to automatically update. So D, so I'm going to go from the data tab from A7 to all of G, right? So once I have that, I'm going to press comma. And then I'm going to type in a quotation marks and then select asterisk, which means select all where 
Now this drop down menu has all the opponent's name. So it's, that's going to be in column D. So I'm going to put where D equals. Now in order to reference a cell in the query formula, you got to type in three quotation marks, two and signs, three quotation marks. Now that's going to be my cell reference. I'm going to leave that empty for now. And then I'm going to close this query formula with a quotation marks and then a parentheses, right? And I'm going to press enter and then I'm going to get an error. So the cell reference that I'm using for the drop down menu is going to be in B3, right? So I'm going to go back into my formula and now in between the and signs, I'm going to type in B3. Now it's going to reference this cell. So what it says is select all the columns asterisk where column D is equal to whatever is in this B3 and then press enter. Now it's going to have all the data here. So let me just do a little bit of formatting. Okay. So now I can select any team and it's going to show all the games that was played there, right? That was played against that team. Um, so this asterisk is selecting all the columns, right? So it's selecting all the columns A through G. But let's say I only want, um, you know, I only want B, C, D, and E, right? That's all I really want. I can go back to my formula. Now, instead of having the asterisk, I'm going to type in B, comma, C, comma, D, comma, E just like that and press enter and it's only going to show those columns. So it's up to you uh, what you want. If you want to have all the columns, then, then just typing in asterisk is easier. But if you just want a few columns, then just type it in, separate it by a comma. So for now, I'm going to do this. Okay, so now this is a really um, simple way of using it. But let's say I want to add in some more filters, right? So let's say I want to see all the games where they played against Denver Nuggets. And I only want to see the home games. So I'm going to have another drop down menu now. I'm going to say select arena. And then for the drop down menu, I'm going to right click it, data validation, list from a range, select a range, go back to the data set. Now I'm going to highlight everything in column C, but not the header because I don't want the word arena to show in the drop down menu. So I've highlighted all of this um, and press OK and then press save. Now when I go back to my example, I can select home or away. Now nothing's gonna happen to the formula yet until I go and update it. So I'm gonna go into the formula here, press enter so it opens up. Now after the first condition where it says where column D is equal to whatever's in cell B3, I'm gonna type in and column C, which is where the home and away is, equals same thing three quotation marks two and signs three quotation marks go back to in between the and sign and type in cell b4 now i'm going to press enter now it's only going to show all the games against the denver nuggets where they are at home if i want to see the away games then it's going to show the away games cool now that you know how to do that let's say we want to add in another filter to show only all of the scores that were above 90 points or 80 points or 100 points, right? So I'm going to say score greater, greater than. Now I'm going to format this a little bit so that it shows all the text. Okay, so I want the drop down menu to show either 80, 90, or 100. So to do that, I'm going to right click where I want the menu, click on data validation. Now there's a few options here. Um, you can type in a number, right? But I'm just gonna go to list of items. And this is where you enter in the items separated by a comma. So this is where whatever you wanna show in your drop down menu, separate each value by a comma. So I want it to show 80. The next thing I wanna show is 90. So I put in the comma, comma 100. So I'm gonna press save. So now they can select either 80, 90, or 100, right? So I'm going to change this this formula so that it only shows so that it doesn't have this filter anymore because if I try and show all of the Denver Nuggets games that are away and above 80 points it's only going to it's going to be the same data so it's not going to be as as big of a big of a change. So let me erase the first condition which is uh where d equals 
whatever is in B3, right? So I'm going to erase all of this. So now the formula only says select all of the data where C is equal to away. So now it's going to show all of the away games and I can essentially delete this option. So now I want to see all the games where the score was above 80 points, right? Let's do 90 points for the first example. So the same thing as before, after the first condition, I'm going to add in and it's basically the same thing with a very small change. So I'm going to type in and column F. Um, let me check. Yeah, so column F is where the team score is, right? So this is the, the column that I'm, I'm referencing. So I'm going to go back into my formula. I'm going to type in and F is greater than one, two, three, two and signs, one, two, three. And then I'm going to type in B4. Now you'll notice here when I press enter, nothing's going to show up. And the reason for that is that when you're doing a cell reference in the query formula, I told you guys before that whenever it's text, it's going to be three quotation marks, right? But whenever you're referencing a number, it's going to only be one quotation mark on each side. And I'm not sure exactly like what it is, but it's basically a concatenation rule within the formula. But there's a couple of rules here that you need to kind of just know off the top of your head. But basically, when you're referencing a number, when the, when whatever the drop down menu is a number, it's going to be one quotation mark only on each side and then press enter. So now it's going to show only all the scores that are above 90. Let's say we want to see only above 100. And now it's only going to do that. Right. And then another thing that we can add to this formula is going to be. OK, so one more thing before I move on is that a lot of times when you put in like an extra quotation marks, you're going to get errors. And I found that for me, like a lot of the times my errors are based on the number of quotation marks. And it's usually going to be three on each side or one on, each, one on each side. So whenever you get a mistake, just that's the first thing that I would check just so it could save you some time. Just double check that. Right. Because it's going to come up again um, in a second. So. Another thing I can add to this formula is I can add in a, a sort, right? So now I can, I can, so let's say I want to sort all of these team scores from smallest to largest. The thing with the query formula is that you can't do it the typical way, which is going to be a filter. And then you want to sort a through Z. It's not going to work. It just goes back to the way it was before. And that's because you need to do the sorting inside the formula. So I'm going to open up my formula at, after my where condition, I'm going to type in, order by it has to be typed in exactly like that order by I'm going to order by column F by F and then press enter. Now it's going to automatically sort it from smallest to largest. But if I want to sort it from uh, largest to smallest, I, after I type in order by F, I have to type in D E S C, which stands for descending. Now it's going to sort it from largest to smallest. If you want to type in A S C, that stands for ascending. Right. But let's say we want to uh, we want to sort we want to give the user the ability to sort. So we're going to add another drop down menu that says um, sort team score by Let me format this so that it shows all of so it shows all of it. Now, this one has to say ASC or DESC. So I'm going to add another drop down menu list of items. It's going to say D, it's the ASC for ascending. It has to be spelled just like that. And DSC, separated by a comma, press save. So now there's an ascending or descending, right? So I'm going to add that in as another cell reference in this formula. So it's, it's, now, it's now instead of typing order by F, ASC, or DSC, I'm going to reference whatever is in this cell. Now, I told you guys before that text is going to be three quotation marks, but this is a weird thing where it's a part of like the formula. It's like a code in the formula. So it's only going to be one quotation mark on each side. So one quotation mark, two and signs and another quotation mark. And then I'm going to reference whatever is in cell B5. So now I can use descending or ascending right now, if I had typed in three quotation marks on each side, I'm going to add two more, it's going to get an error. So if you get this type of error, like that's the first thing that I would check is just to make sure, just try it out with, you know, one on each side and see what happens. That's typically the mistake. 
So uh, this is basically how you do it. It's not that hard. I'm going to show you. I'm going to I'm going to share this sheet with you guys in the description so that you guys can just kind of go here, go to file, go to make a copy. Don't request access. That way you guys can play around with this sheet to see how I built it. The next thing I want to show you guys is how to filter by date. So let's say that we want to show all the games in like in between like a certain date range or like greater than October or, or you know, things like that. Um, I'm going to show that to you guys in the next video because working with dates in the query formula is actually a little bit more complicated and requires more like a longer video. So, um, yeah, this is how you guys use drop down menus with multiple filters. Let me know if you guys have any questions and make sure to subscribe if you guys want to see more tutorials like this. And leave a comment if you guys have any questions or any other suggestions for videos that you guys want to see. Thanks, guys.